open up my right hip and connect via the ankle. What this enables me to do, it enables me to pummel my knee in and start looking to get inside position at his knee and hip. And I can choose to go to a Today I'll go over some of my tripod passing. And so generally the thought behind this is understanding uh, the situation and the posture that my opponent is in and trying to pass them accordingly. So I don't want to try to do something that might be harder than extended. So in a situation, especially when my partner is seated, um, what I'm going to be looking to do, since his, he's seated, his upper body is inherently closer to me than if he were on his back. So I'm going to try to take advantage of that fact and gain control of his upper body before even looking to pass his legs. So generally there are two um, two ways you can look to pass on the guard. And you have to meet two, uh, two criteria. One is controlling upper body and pinning their shoulders in that. And two is passing their legs, or aka like denying them the ability to manage distance with their legs. And so what I'm gonna be looking to do is do one or the other. So I can pass the legs first or get the upper body first. So in this case, because he's seated, his upper body's closer to me, I'm gonna get the upper body. Generally, the grips I tend to favor are going to be increased a little bit here. Are going to be on one underhook and one head block. So in order for me to get this, I want to create separation between my opponent's elbows and his ribs. So I can do that in a few ways. Some of my favorite being threatening to put him to his back and putting weight onto his hands. And by putting weight onto his hands, so he doesn't want to concede to a supine guard, notice how once he posts his hands, now there's separation between his elbow and his ribs. So that's going to present to me a very good opportunity to start looking to shoot an underhook, get head to head, and pin his shoulders to the mat. Once this happens, now it's a matter of passing his legs. And so, whether that be through various forms of leg pummels, hip switches, etc., once I pass the legs, I'm already in a great pass position because I've already pinned his upper body. Because that's what I started out with. It's the similar. Uh, the similar benefit to passing with half guard styles of passes because you're already controlling their upper body. Once you pass the legs, it's a great position to work from. So from here, we'll go over some of my favorite leg pummels. Um, let's circle a little bit. So from here, I'll demonstrate from hands on the mat just so it's easier to hear. But from here, what I'm going to be looking to do on the side that I have an underhook, so let's say I have a right arm underhook, I'm going to look to bring knee to knee to try to directly affect this femur and access it as a lever and bring it across its hips. If I manage to do so, this is great. I have an underhook, I've pinned his upper body, and I've managed to pass the legs. However, you can anticipate resistance against a different opponent. So as I look for the knee and bring it across, he closes me open. And what I'm gonna look to do is, instead of connecting to him via our knees, I'm gonna look to open up my right hip and connect via the ankles. What this enables me to do, it enables me to pummel my knee in and start looking to get inside position at his knee and hip. And I can choose to go to a straight hip or a cross hip. Generally, dependent on the situation, a cross hip is going to be more conducive to quick passes, whereas a straight hip is going to be more conducive to uh, controlling and then slowly working towards the pass. So I'll change the angle a little bit, but this is one of my favorite pummels I looked at from here. So I've managed to create separation between Tyler's elbows, whether it be that guy. Uh, forcing him to post, lifting his ankles, forcing him onto his back, etc. And in his reaction, in his efforts to stop that, what he's going to do is post his hands to the mat. And so once that happens, I get an underhook, I float my head next to his head, and once again, I'll demonstrate from here. I go knee to knee, so I drive the knees across, he opens his knees, I'm going to flare my knee out and connect at the ankles. Now that my knees free to move, I can go into straight hip, or cross it, and finish with a pass. Uh, this is one of my favorite pummels I tend to use, especially from a headquarters position, uh, when I'm tripoded up. I like playing with my hips high since it uh, forces me control over their upper body and it makes it very easy to pass very flexible and good opponents. Yeah, so when jo Joseph first arrived to Austin in the team, he was killing everybody with this high tripod passing. It was very, very impressive. And it's really a different style of passing than what people are used to. Um, so Joseph right now, he's based between Shanghai and Austin, right? Uh, probably be back in Austin again later this year to prep for the next trials. Uh, Joseph, if people want to find you, how do they find you, bro? Um, I have my Instagram's uh, Joseph Chen Jiu Jitsu, so uh, Joseph Chen JJ, um, also on Instagram. Awesome, thank you, bro.